Ridiculous. I'm one of your hosts, DK Diamantes, and on the Adeptus Ridiculous, we are all about the ridiculous, and my co-host, Bricky, is going to be sharing some really crazy stuff. Uh, last episode, we talked about the fall of Cadia, which, well, oh, there are a lot of... There was a lot, there was a lot there, it was a really interesting episode, uh, but before we get into today's episode, which is apparently the revival of Robot Gilliman, uh, patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous, if you enjoy today's podcast, you'll get access to things like the Discord, bloopers, uh, HD posters, uh, voting polls for stuff like what Shy's gonna be painting next, if she's painting something, a lot of great stuff, check it out. Um, but yeah, Bricky, uh, today, uh, what is Hello. it like? Hello! Con- what is it, like the conclusion of the fall of Cadia? Sort well, of? It's already concluded, A little, but... a little bit. Oh, we haven't told you quite yet, but of course I need to do my quick announcements. Uh, oh, of yeah, course. jeez, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> I got stuff to do too, DK. Sorry, like, sorry. Like to so, shout, out, so the gotta shout sorry. out the merchandise. I got to shout out the merchandise, the, the you're shirts, right, you're right. the hoodies, the Doge Van Dyer stickers, all things you can find at Orchidate.com in the Adept Ridiculous section, or also linked in the description, of course. We got to shout that out because merchandise is awesome. And you seem to have been very much enjoying the stickers. So thank you so much for, for snagging a little bit of that. Also, we are coming close to June, and that means that we are coming close to the first episode of the book club which will be on, again, the book The Infinite and the Divine. If you haven't started reading that or listening to it on Audible, personally, I prefer listening to it because I think the the VA does a lot of extra... He has a lot of emphasis to it. Um, Go ahead and get started on that. It's not super long, but still, I don't want, like... I think our next episode will be on, what, like, uh, Wednesday? It will be on the 2nd, and then the episode will probably come out on, like, the 5th, which is or, or, like, the 4th. So it'll it'll be pretty soon, pretty early in June. So you only got a little bit over a week to get that stuff done. Anywho, that was all I had to do in terms of am, shilling, exceptional I'm just, shilling. I'm just about done with the Infinite and the Divine, and ooh, I can't wait to talk about it, dude. Please, <laughs> I cannot wait to talk about that. The, the second half gets surprisingly good and like surprisingly deep. It's oh really God, good. It does. It does. Ugh. Okay. Okay. I know. okay. We, we need to focus right. on today's episode. That's the book club episode that we're all very excited for. But we got to focus on uh, the the aftermath of the fall of Cadia. The, the yeah, planet you, cracked yeah, you, before the guard did. Yeah, you thought, bitch. That's not what we're doing today. <laughs> oh, we're not no, doing really? the af- No, we're not actually doing the aftermath of Cadia. <laughs> oh shit! What are we doing? Uh, okay, you not you see I'm excited. I'm very sorry that I'm gonna have to crush your dreams right now. That's but we okay. thought it would be a little bit unfortunate to cover uh, good old Roboot Gilliman without doing the Ultramarines first. So we're doing the Ultramarines episode. The you full on something? Ultramarines episode. You know something? In my head, I was legit thinking that. I was like, okay, so I know he said that next episode he's gonna talk about the fall, like the revival of Robot Gilliman. I was like, we ain't even done Ultramarines yet. I don't know shit about Robot Gilliman. So like somehow he's gotta twirl this around someone that doesn't know the lore of the Ultramarines. How's he gonna do that? <laughs> so this makes sense. I'm Good. down. I'm glad actually. Cause that because it's obviously okay. So there's obviously a few things. One, it's no secret that not a lot of people are a big fan of, well, let me rephrase that. Ultramarines are like, we're, we're like Nickelback a decade ago, right? <laughs> oh, oh, boy, they're, that they're bad, not, huh? <laughs> No, 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 it's, it's a, they're not particularly bad, but everyone just really likes to hate on them. Like, they're not terrible. I mean, you know, Nickelback I is pretty bad, though. Even when people like them, they were still pretty shit. I mean... Eh, I don't know. And look at this photograph, right? I mean, come on. Okay, that was a great meme when it was around. <laughs> but point point being is that regardless, I think more people hate Ultramarines that n- even know about Ultramarines, and we're we're guilty about that a little bit. Present, we've, yep. <laughs> we've meme we've memed on them quite a bit. Um, yeah. again, now so I did all the research for the Ultramarines. Um, there is a lot. Oh my god. Uh, this there is, there is yeah. so much lore. Uh, I'm gonna cover a probably decent amount of it, but oh man. Um, however, after reading it, I, I can confirm two things. Mm-hmm. One, the Ultramarines are not as bad as people say they are. They're worse. And two, okay. uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and two, uh, Gilliman is a fucking Boy Scout. 
that's what I've heard. I've heard that Gilliman is amazing. You may hate the Ultramarines, but you gotta respect Gilliman. That's what you keep telling me every time I try and shit on everything Ultramarine. It's like, no, no, you gotta respect Gilliman because he's a fucking Chad and he's great and he's amazing and I guess fine, whatever. He he is a Chad. He is still a Boy Scout. Like, okay. like he's like a straight edge. It's hard to describe him. I'll get into it and you'll understand. Um, okay. But it is interesting regardless uh so let's go ahead and get started into into the good old blueberries i feel like some people <laughs> might have a little bit more of an appreciation for them after today uh if only slightly okay. so gilliman our big man uh, is not only heavily heavily documented across the imperium <laughs> he is a primarch that has almost all of his past meticulously detailed because wow. he is him gilliman as opposed to so many other the Primarchs, but he's also pretty good looking. He's a, oh, okay. you know, he's a good looking guy. A lot of the Primarchs, a lot of space Marines just look really ugly because they're all fucking <laughs> scarred up or gross or like have all these like injection ports and shit in their face and, and neck mm -hmm. and stuff. Gilliman's a good looking man. He, he's got, he's got that, that suave look to him. He's got that jawline, you know? And Gilliman, he was obviously, we all know, he got yeeted into the warp, all the yep, pods. Yep. He and arrived. Yep. He arrived on Macrog or Macrag. Also, I'm, there's going to be some pronunciation weirdness. I'm going to teach you how to say Gilliman properly, um, and it's oh. it's not it's not great. It's not. I wait, so it's not Gilliman. Well, his last name is Gilliman. Uh, his first right. name we always call Robot or whatever. You, you know, his first name is Robute. Oh no, he's robot. I'm sorry. I'm not saying Robute Gilliman. Robute. His no, name he's is Robute. Robot Gilliman. Beep Robute boop, Gilliman. Boop, beep boop. Robot Gilliman. That's, that's all Ro <laughs> Robo Gorilla Man. We always we uh, ro Roboat. You call him Roboat if you robot like. Roboat Gilliman. <laughs> Because he rowboats the Eldari. Let's go. Anyway, go ahead. We're not there yet. That's that's <laughs> the next episode. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just know that. I just know that's one of the memes. Well, well, our, our good man, our good man Rabute, <laughs> Ro, Ro Eldar Bute. <laughs> sorry. Um, he he arrived to McCrag. All right, McCrag, the home of the Ultramarines. Now, this, unlike so many other of the Primarchs, this was a pretty normal world. It wasn't too great. It wasn't too bad. It was it was fine. And it was on the fringe of space with some other of the Imperium's old colonies way back in the day of the Age of Strife. Wait, no. Age of Strife? Yes, Age of Strife. Back with the warp storms and shit. Yeah, these yeah, worlds the had stuff, yep. Yeah, these worlds had survived. And they still maintained a decent social order and hierarchy there, but like not perfect. Holy shit, Shy just sent us a bunch of different names for robot for ro oh robot. Bobby G String. Bobby G Sting, Robust Girly Man, Robot Gorilla Man, Robooty Guillotine. Robot Girly Man, there you go. Ladies, G Man. Huh? Uh wait. <laughs> T S Gratchis get in the van. What? Rob. Just Rob. <laughs> Every Big possible blue combination of the previous nickname. <laughs> Big Blue Mary Sue. The Emperor's Personator. Bobby McGillicuddy. <laughs> Rumble Boffin Counter Punch. <laughs> the greatest little derivative pile of blueberry pudding pop fuckery that has ever glazed the surface of this shitty little galaxy. Okay, I feel like that's a little extreme. <laughs> this sounds I don't like know she got. Calls him that. <laughs> this sounds like they got. She got this from One D Four Chan. This this reeks of One D Four. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. One D Four Chan, great for memes, by the way. Amazing yeah, great for memes. memes. Not great for everything else. Anyway, yeah. um, so this area in McCraig still had like spacecraft, short range travel, kept them in in check with like their recent neighbors as well. Like it was a functioning society. So when his capsule landed, the people, like, they found it when they were just hunting in the woods or whatever, just some regular old folk. And mm -hmm. this wasn't seen as something, like, superstitious or wild or anything. They were like, whoa, that's an advanced fucking capsule that fell from the sky. And they opened it, and there was a baby inside of it. And they're like, shit, there's a kid in here. Like, they were pretty normal. And this okay. child was taken to the noble governor of the largest capital city of Macrog, known as Konor Gilliman. Oh. And... 
he found the son and he's like, I will name you Robute, Rob Robute Gilliman. And he adopted him as his own kid. Okay. Pretty. So that's where the name comes from. Yep. He got a guy from his foster father. Okay. Uh, and like most Primarchs, he grew a little faster than he should have. <laughs> um, significantly more than the average person. He showed like insane amounts of determination, intelligence. At the age of 10, he mastered like most of the major tutor subjects for school. He oh, like wow. he mastered the arts as well, philosophy, history, understanding of human nature, psychology. Um, but he was most adept, of course, at the art of war. And of that was a, a big part of Macrag culture. Uh, they they like to fight a lot. Um, they weren't like barbarians or anything, but they were a little bit more industrial and a little bit more like, do you ever play Endless Space 2? Nope. All right, that's fine. Uh, anyway. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, uh, what did you so, think I was going to say? <laughs> this always I, happens, man. <laughs> Endless Space 2, it's like space civilization. It's for boomers. Well, not this boomer. Man, whatever, man. Go whatever, go listen man. to the go listen to the weekend. Um, but, okay, <laughs> he's really good. <laughs> and then no, no one's gonna know that we had a whole conversation about the weekend before we started this episode. That's true. That's true. Now they know. They just have now, no context to it. But now they yep, know we and, had one, and they get to deal with it. <laughs> uh, when he uh, ah, uh, when he was in legal age, he was given a force, <laughs> like a little force of military, to pacify some of the northern lands of Macra. There's some assholes, raiders, people out there. Uh, he arrived and he was able to sway the opposing raiders and forces. Like he gained their respect of the war bands and he like pacified the group sometimes with force, but he was able to pacify the whole group and get them working together because he was just a really good diplomat. Yeah. But when he came home, he found his capital city in like total fucking chaos. The a co-councilman of his father named Gallen, he led a coup against his foster dad and this was hardly, like, a new thing. This was, like, a, a Tuesday on Macrog. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but in this instance, it was a little bit more hefty. It was all about political power and, and money that his father, foster father had got him. And a little bit worrisome of his new, like, foster son's position. Because he's young and incredibly large and intelligent and scary. Mm -hmm. um, lots of politics at play here the long and short of it is that this guy gallim and his conspirators were all a bunch of aristocrats in an old aristocracy mm -hmm. and they were mainly led by a lot of impoverished young people like the poor and konor was a hardcore industrialist and so with all of his major like industry oh. he made the people very wealthy and the uh, like the aristocracy or the aristocrats kind of lost their power quite a bit because right. the aristocrats really relied on like the poor to gain yeah, their yeah. wealth. Mm -hmm. And Konor was was quite the industrialist. He was very much like meritocracy. Uh, he made massive like sweeping infrastructure changes for the city, which made him nearly untouchable in the eyes of the people because they fucking loved him for that. Uh. And so. Obviously, this is where the coup came in. The, the, arist the yeah. uh, aristocrats wanted the power back. Oh, um, yeah, I imagine they would. They don't want the people having power and money. They want it all to themselves. Also, how do you trust a guy named Gallen? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the Sultan being like, oh, yes, my advisor, Jafar. He's very loyal. There's nothing. He has a snake staff, red and blue. He's fine. He would never betray. His name is Gallen, for God's sakes. Like, it's really? Like, it's like, oh, I'm, don't worry. We're a peaceful nation. You know, just ask good, our, our good leader, Gosh Van Dyer. <laughs> He's like, oh, who now? <laughs> yeah, he's a swell guy. Don't worry about it. He's swell. Ugh. So, so Gallen uh, went to town. He led a big old, like, uh, well, uh, obviously the coup, as I mentioned before, but uh, between his own military force, he raided the palace, and then he got a bunch of drunken mob to go out and, like, burn down cities, go murder people, backed by them, all that stuff. So when Gilliman arrived, he was like, oh, shit. And he let the looters get dealt with by his troops. He's like, hey, mm -hmm. troops that I, I just returned with, deal with the rioters, deal with the looters. I'm going to go get my dad. So he made his way all the way to the palace and found it just riddled with bullets and, and just mass destruction. And he found his father in the care of the medics. And his father, Konor, is a fucking shad 
Um, oh. He uh, survived an assassination attempt against him. I'm not quite sure what it was, whether it was like a bullet that grazed his head or like a poisoning or whatever, but he was crippled for three days in the medic's care. And in those three days between surgeries, between like, like massive op operations and being like dying, he commanded and instructed the entire counter offensive to keep the palace safe. He oh, was like, shit. he was like the general being like, go secure this flank, do all this. And he's like, he's like, doctor, put the scalpel away. We'll get this done later. This whole Damn. time. So in and out of like surgeries and medical procedures, he was just like, yeah, dude. And, and he was giving orders to like stop the coup. Yeah, he he. the palace, besides like wow. the destruction in there, was mostly secure because this dude was leading his forces. And it's like, damn, Gilman's dad is cool. That's impressive. That's pretty di that dip dope. <laughs> that dead dip by that dip. <laughs> yeah, buy that dip. <laughs> Need that dip. Jesus. So <laughs> G Gilliman then after a bit, uh, was talking with his dad, his dad told him everything, who attacked him, can find all the people and that stuff. And then his dad shortly after passed away, of course. Um, uh, from his wounds. Yeah, from his wounds. And he told every him everything, whose blood, like whose fault it was and whose blood was on their hands. And Gilliman's cold and collected attitude was was nowhere to be found in the next coming week. Oh that, boy, I bet he went on a rampage. He was not pleased mm -mm. Uh, with his like just art of like war, his genius mind in terms of battlefield. He crushed the rebellion just like outright, extremely easily Ooh. within days. And then he found all of the conspirators, conspirators and the rioters, and he took the rioters and drunken mob and he had them publicly hung in the streets and and oh. hung across like the the roads. And then he got both the Gallon guy and his conspirators and put them out under public execution. And, and he was just like, don't do this. And he just <laughs> he publicly killed them all. Let this be an example. Oh, man. That's yeah. sounds like he could use that rage like three days earlier when his dad was still alive. But yeah, but he I wasn't there I at the, the time. The catalyst was, was necessary to get him to go ultra mode. The catalyst was helpful. He had to pull out a little bit of his Conrad Kurz side, apparently. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, public executions. You know, let's just make it that way. Yeah, yeah that's um, how you stop crime, right? Learn from your brother. <laughs> um. So then after that, he now assumed the mantle of where his father uh, used to be. And he went quick work to rebuild the city, going full on industrial and really overall doing some pretty insane upgrades to the city to the point where the aristocracy was basically all but dead either publicly executed or losing <laughs> so much power that they were just as useful as a minor citizen um and then <laughs> he loved to hear oh, when the aristocracy gets what they fucking deserve love oh it. he stoked it was great starting um, to like him more and more now <laughs> And not only that, but he went to work on, like, the actual people. Like, new workers and soldiers were given benefits and rewards, like GI Bills. Like, if oh. you if you served to assist in the infrastructure or you were a soldier, you got, like, homes, benefits. A veterans association that actually fucking works. Like, Whoa. Macraw became, like, a self-sufficient meritocracy. It was a place where the hardworking and the intelligent thrived extremely well, and those who tried to skirt the law or try to undermine it would either be poor or punished. Sounds like, like a good it was, place to be. It's it's not bad. No, he was very much like you put you you get what or you get what you put in. If you work hard, you are rewarded in a in a society that actually does benefit that. It's hmm. not like. Hey, you know, work hard, make money, get and fucked you over, know. right? <laughs> yeah, well, problems might occur, but no, it's legitimately like, hey, you you do well, and by what? then, this is about where the emperor finally made his way. Oh no, um, he's gonna fuck everything up, isn't he? I was about to say, McCrag sounds like it, as far as forty k is concerned, right? McCrag sounds yes. like a paradise where you just you go there, you work hard, you get paid. Everything is swell. And then the goddamn emperor shows up. <laughs> oh, the emperor actually showed up in an interesting way. He actually arrived when Gilliman was out to go fight those enemies and raiders in the field when he left for oh. his first thing. Um, oh, however, no. 
Cause so obviously the multiple planets that they actually still had contact with knew of the new Conor Gilliman sun. And they were like, yeah, the, the crazy sun, the really big one. That's like really intelligent. And the emperor was like, I know who that is. <laughs> and, but unfortunately, because this is what happens all the time, apparently is that a giant warp storm happened and that forced oh. the emperor to not be able to make it to Macrog for another five more years of travel. And okay. meanwhile, during that period of time, Gilliman was hard at work. He was maintaining infrastructure, creating trade routes between the other planets in his local system. He was slowly building out his influence into not just other systems, but other like, or other planets, but other systems entirely. Uh, and so much so that when the Emperor arrived, he was so fucking pleased. He didn't, he didn't change anything. Oh, wow. Like, no, he was like, wow, I don't need to strip this down or deal with any of the issues. Like, it's this is this is. is good. I'm like the emperor arrived, he was extremely happy. Like, this is oh. extremely well made. And immediately once he arrived, Gilliman just swore allegiance like that because he was he was too smart to think that he had been birthed normally. It's like I'm I'm pretty sure I was created or something, and then like, oh, there he is, there's the creator. There's yep, yep. I mean so, it makes sense. There he is. It does. It, it really he does. Didn't, he didn't fix anything. The emperor was just like, "Oh yeah, this is all perfect. I don't need to do anything. You, you, you've done it. You, you're the forty k now, right? <laughs> you are the. You truly <laughs> are the Warhammer forty thousand. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, though. That the emperor was just like, "Oh yeah, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm a happy camper, and everything is perfect, and I will touch nothing." That's. That's a big deal, right? <laughs> like, usually the Emperor finds something like, oh, yeah, this is mostly right, but let's tweak it. Like, that's a big deal. Well, he might he might change some, he might have changed something, but okay. compare, like, comparing to him arriving on the Stromo and Conrad Kurz's <laughs> rule, like... <laughs> <laughs> or, like, when he showed up for Mortarian. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> Let me kill your dad. It's like, oh, this smells like it. shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's because it is, Dad. It's my shit. It's my shit. I stank it up. Yeah. It's my dad to kill. Get out of here. So obviously he arrived with his ultra, with his uh, current Marine chapter, and Gilliman. He didn't think a lot like his other Primarchs. He saw his Legion as way more than than weapons. He he thought that war was more than weapons. War was supply chains and trade routes and manufact like manufactorums of weapons and a steady stream of repopulated soldiers. Like Gilliman thought war is waged on the drawing board and the conveyor belt, not the ground. Like that was his mindset when it came to war. So not only would McCrog like oh, normally whenever you get new recruits for a legion, it comes from the home world. For him be, right. it would be McCrog. However, he would decide that no, it wouldn't just be from a Krog. I'm going to get it from my entire new area. The all the plants that I have in the Macrog system or something he referred to as Ultramar. Ultramar is this large sphere of space that got recruits from a large amount of planets. It was like an ever expanding sphere of influence entirely under the guise of Gilliman and his Ultramarines because okay. I got, I got to, I'll, I'll do this quote later on, but he's quite the, he's quite the intelligent, like, um, what's the term I'm, I'm looking for? It's, it's very much the, the guy who's all about like the infrastructure and the understanding of like production wise, you know, mm -hmm. the he's Ultramar, very, though, <laughs> what a dumb name. Oh, Ultramar is a little silly. Yes. <laughs> but... For such a smart guy, he comes up with some dumb names. I think there was a reason for it. I don't remember why he called it Ultramar. The, well, come on. Where else do Ultramarines come from but the Ultramar? They're Marines no, from no. the Ultramar. Come on. He, it guy. was called Ultramar first, and then it was became the Ultramarines named after Ultramar. Well, whatever. I know. I know. It's a little it's a little derpy. I told you he's a Boy Scout. He is a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> right. That means so that's another reason I hate the Ultramarines because it's a dumb name and a dumb origin <laughs> for a name. But Rollboy Gilliman is still pretty pretty great. He he is he's a smart man, a and he understands the importance of figuring out supply chains and strength through it. Now sure. he taught like a very specific way of thinking. It's a dual doctrine. One side is about courage, 
discipline, skill, and adaptability. That's the practical side of war. The other was planning, precedent, analysis, and assessment, which for him was the theoretical side. And he was, again, he's... He's yeah, he's a nerd. I know, but he really got this part down. He's like the, he's like an accountant who loves his job. It's it's okay. very it's very silly. But during the Great Crusade itself, the Ultramarines liberated more worlds than any of the other legions, and this is oh, mainly due to Gilliman's love for government <laughs> and, and <laughs> his love for government. Love and, for government. Love that government. And their size. Uh, like, he didn't just make sure the worlds went under him. He set up a self-sustaining government system. He created support defenses and orbital stations. He truly made sure that these planets that he liberated would be self-sufficient and useful outposts for the Ultramarines if they ever needed to come back. Like, new recruits were brought in from the slowly expanding Ultramar system to increase the strength. Like... When Horus finally became War Master, I think the Ultramarines had 250,000 Marines, and the second largest was the Word Bearers at like 100,000? Wow. Like, they were That's... very big. It's quite a bit. Well, I guess it makes sense. If every planet you liberate, you're like setting up an infrastructure where it can contribute and be self-sustaining you're gonna you're gonna amass a pretty fucking big army real quick that way that's that's pretty smart hell yeah and also it's it's kind of interesting because okay i know you probably haven't played this game either but have you played frostpunk um that's the uh that's the one where like your city's in perpetual winter and you gotta make it survive yep. i played a little bit not a ton, uh, i have it played a little bit so I, I've actually been playing it a lot recently. I really like it. I also like game. really depressing Polish games. Uh, oh, well. So and that, <laughs> that's in, a depressing check. Polish game. <laughs> um, but I, I was playing it recently, and I feel like people who really like Frostpunk, which is a great game, um, those to those listening, it's a great game. You should try it. Uh, it's you it's should, like yeah. I without I want to sound like a like a games journalist, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. It's the Dark Souls of city builders. <laughs> Oh, oh man, there's a there's a, someone's hitting the thumbs down now. You know that, right? Somebody just the clicked the thumbs down. <laughs> I'm clicking the thumbs down in the future just for that. Oh. It, it's it's a very hard city builder. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you're the kind of person who really likes like you, you really enjoy like industry and infrastructure because there's a whole fucking science about figuring out how to properly maintain like infrastructure and economy and trade and government. Like there's a huge science with between behind that stuff. People make oh, yeah. millions of dollars to figure this shit out. And if you mm. like that stuff really like hard, you probably like Gilliman quite a bit. Oh, Cause yeah, that's his definitely. whole thing is, is like supply routes and chains and, and, and infrastructure. Yeah. Um, hell smart, when Horus became, when Horus became war master, when he was finally given war master after the, uh, I forget exactly the the war's name, but the big the big orc war, and right after that, um, uh, he actually like unlike a lot of his other brothers. Oh, Triumph of Ulinar, that was what it was called. Uh, unlike his other brothers, Gilliman was like, okay, Horus is the war master. He he, he accepted oh. this without any resentment, and even though Horus kind of believed that Gilliman would have been a better fit. It kind of sounds that way. Like I mean, considering what he's done with Ultramar. Um, <laughs> Ultramar. <laughs> Ultramar. <Ooh. laughs> Ultramar. Come with a better name, you fucker. Uh, it it does sound like he'd make a great war master. Like he would be, he'd be a great person to lead uh, the emperor's armies. Like that's, uh, you know, he he sounds pretty great. He he's lacks a little bit of charisma. Um, he's not uh, that bad. Uh, Horus, don't forget, Horus is like a fucking saint. Now, right, everyone right. loved him to death. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Comparing him to Rogel Dorn in terms of charisma, <laughs> is, it, like he he's also a saint. But you know he's he's a he's a Boy Scout. He likes his he likes making his stuff. Um, he likes making you, his stuff. <laughs> your cat is named Ultra Nyan, and my oh. sword is named Ultra Stab. Oh no, that's that's probably what he would name it too. 
I forgot. I it's like, it's... Dad, my sword is now called Ultra Stab, and Emperor's like, no, 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 we didn't have this conversation. <laughs> He's just, oh, oh, the like, his memory? No, you didn't. You're, it's just a sword. Get away. The ultra, the, like, Emperor's like rattling his bones in his chair. He's like, he keeps naming things Ultra. <laughs> I can't move. I'm just bones. Get him out of here. I'm so angry. He's like, hey, Dad, what, how's it like on your Ultra throne? And he's just like, ah! The bones just slowly decay into dust. And he's like, I'm out. Peace. Um, okay. So, uh, qu uh, quote time. Quote time. Let's go. Quote time. <clears throat> Space Marines excel at warfare because they were designed to excel at everything. Each of you will become a ruler, a leader, the master of your world, and then when there is no more fighting to be done, you will bend your talents to order, governance, and culture so that the Imperium will stand eternal. That was Gilliman. Gilliman to his, to his like uh, chapter masters and, and Space Marines was like, hey guys, I mean, I don't think he knew about what happened with the Thunder Warriors, but he was like, hey, we can't just be for war. Like, well, eventually, there will be no more war. At least he thought so. And when <laughs> yeah. there is no and when there's no more war, you are going to need to rule planets. You are going to need to be governors. You are going to need to be actual, like, you're going to need to foster culture and people. Like, and that, like, you're not going to just be a weapon for war. You're actually going to need to lead and you're going to need to make your people happy. And he, he he realized that like uh, so many other people are just like I'm I'm bred for war and war alone. He's like guys, we gotta study the book of laws, right? So like, he he was no -no. hopeful that at that one day there would be no war and that they would need to know something other than just how to properly fire a gun. Like he was actually hopeful that one day he wouldn't need to fight anymore and all of his ultramarines would scatter around and just sort of live happy lives as like governors of states as presidents or something like that yeah more in the idea of like the pl the plants he controlled and stuff they would be oh, leaders right, right, of right. that area as opposed to just being like go out there go take rule right you know right. he's very much like hey let's go figure about this and figure that out and yada yada mm -hmm. uh as for moving on from there we also got to this unfortunate thing it's called the Horus Heresy, you know? Oh, now, that thing. Yeah, I've heard a couple yeah. things about that. Yeah, yeah. You know one of my favorite quotes is from our from our um, Night Lords episode? What's that? I, I was like, hey, DK, remember 9-11? Pretty bad, right? Pretty terrible. <laughs> Worst thing ever. Yep. Yep. Horus Heresy? It's like three 9-11s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Horus Heresy, very bad. Very, it's very 9-11. Very, very, yeah. What, what was the, the the Hitler scale from the guardsmen all guardsmen party? Oh God, I I, I don't I, I feel like I would remember some scale like that. I do not remember. <laughs> oh, it was it was the fan fiction we read where it's like they they measured massacres oh! on the Hitler scale. Right, right, and it was like three Hitlers or something in the guardsmen yeah. fan fic. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect. Because of how much right. Oh boy, that that I don't remember a lot about that night. Um, but <laughs> that's mm -hmm. fair. That was a good night. Yeah. Um. Okay, so now we're going to get more into the actual what he did during the heresy. Um, like, like normal, most of our faction overviews are basically just overviews of Primarchs, if we're being totally honest. Sure. Uh, which is probably better anyway, because that's kind of the point. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a couple things. Now, for those huge uh, Ultramarine fans out there, I'm talking to you, Luton. Uh, ah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go over the, the like, Kalth, the Battle of Kalth. And then I'm going to have to go over the Shadow Crusade and the Imperium Secundus. And these are like books on books on books. And in that because of that, I'm going to... This is going to be very, like, brief. So please don't please don't hate me. So... The comments the battle of You know that, right? I know, I know. It's already but, there. I know, but it's Ultramarine <laughs> fans, whatever. Yeah, uh, anyway, yeah, they, go play Frostpunk, you bitch. Ooh! Uh, <laughs> I actually really want to play more Frostpunk. <laughs> I like Frostpunk. Should. It's a great game. It's a really good game. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, that we're just in a Frostpunk review. We'll talk about Frostpunk, we're we'll talking about Lima Russ. Um go go yeah, go build a go build a house and, and call it my ultra house. So um Horus, of course, was like, you know, little evil. And at this point, he was very evil. And in order... Now, obviously, the Ultramarines posed the largest threat because they were like three legions in one. Their sheer size and Gilliman's rule. Sure. And so in order to properly deal with them, they had to take them away from the battle before they do the Siege of Terra. 
So they sent them to Kalth. It's a world. It's a world of Kalth. Yeah. Okay. It was in it was in the Ultramar realm. Um, however, Kalth itself it is they're like, hey, hey man, uh, there's a giant orc wall coming. We need you guys to get there to help deal with them. They're amassing. So Horus had the Ultramarines and Gilliman go over there in an attempt to work with the now very begrudged and angry word bearers. Hey, hey, I'm a word bearer. Hey, I'm hey. A cool guy. hey. you burned the down my monarchia. I'm very angry. I turned traitor, and I'm waiting for you, Gilliman. Hey. Hey, and I'm gonna blow hey. your ships out of the sky when you arrive because I'm fucking angry. Hey. Ooh, that sounds bad for Gilliman. That sounds it not great. Is. That does not sound good. They arrived and life got bad. As soon as they <laughs> arrived, all the word bearers were like, what's up, fuckers? And just immediately <laughs> ambushed them like mad. They completely, like, just fucked Gilliman up. Like, they curb stomped him so hard it was uh, completely decimating to his fleet and they geez. needed it because one it's important to remember like the size difference and two obviously they had the aspect of surprise the yeah. thing is that this is the giant like battle of of Kalth, and the word bearers killed like ungodly amounts of ultramarines they got slapped and in fact so almost to the point of of almost gilliman's flagship himself not making it, but he, he just barely scraped by. And for a while, they had a bunch of Ultramarines leading like assaults on, not leading assaults, leading background attacks on the planet's surface itself, mm. barely making it through or like bunkering up. Uh, in fact, I think, oh yeah, Shai just told me they killed 120,000 Ultramarines. That's a lot of Ultramarines. And wait, that's you like said half. They I was going to say, you said there was like 200,000-ish Ultramarines. They killed more than a half of every Ultramarine? 250, actually. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was, there was 250 when Horace became Warmaster. He might have had more. I don't know. Point being, they killed a lot of Ultramarines in this battle. I like, might be becoming a Word Bearers fan now. <laughs> hey, we already we already talked about Lorgar a little bit. <laughs> we did. Jeez, that is one hell of an ambush, though. Like, I was thinking, like, oh, okay, yeah, they're gonna get jumped, but it's the Ultramarines, surely. You know, they'll even through an ambush, they can just, oh my god, let's strategy this this shit out, and we'll make a comeback and fight them off, and yeah. Well, they did do that. So Gilman surviving with his flagship, he was able to start doing like little hidden run attacks, being able to kind of make his way around back and forth and. and the word bearers were like gleefully enjoying this. They're like, ha, 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 I fucking love this. Di or, sorry. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm fucking. Oh, never mind. I, I can't. <laughs> Go with the first voice. Don't ever do that second one ever again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how to do proper to do proper Italian angry angry Italian. Anyway, they were they were stoked to because they were like so happy to kill Ultramarines. They, they it was like their arch nemesis. As we and all for, are. Yeah, well, everyone has their, like, famed rival, right? Thousand Sons, mm -hmm. Lehman Russ. Uh, obviously, uh, we have the Ultramarines and the War Bears, the Dark Angels and the Night Lords. They all have their famed, uh, oh, Imperial Fists and, and um, Iron Warriors. There's always, like, the rivalry. This is the big rivalry here. Uh, gotcha. But he was able to do a pretty good job at, at uh, somewhat surviving. Uh, and eventually, with enough time, he's able to get a broadcast out into the Ultramar system to get reinforcements. Uh, to oh, arrive okay. um, and they and they did they, they were able to arrive but unfortunately the war bearers being the war bearers were pretty uh, pretty sneaky and they were able to snag a whole bunch of the orbital batteries on Kalth and fire at the star orbiting the planet which destabilized the star pretty heavily oh. and it, it didn't supernova it but it made it so that the actual surface of Kalth was completely uninhabitable. And oh. it basically trapped all the remaining Ultramarines and Word Bearers that were on the surface underground in order to do subterranean fighting. Oh, because of course, radiation, I assume, uh, and the heat from the yeah, uh, just star? star stuff. Yeah, whatever yeah, the star yeah. did. 
Uh, there's always though, radiation in 40k. There's always radiation. Somehow that triggered a radiation explosion on the planet, right? And no, uh, yeah, always I, there's always there's always time. Like you can't go on there. Why? Because your teeth will fall out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, although I must say, between uh, Lorgar being the yellow crewmate and and uh, Gilliman being the blue crewmate, oh no! Are unfortunately, really? the uh. red crewmate had to arrive, and our All good right. man Erasus had made it. And, oh, and, and and our good man Erebus was like, hey, I'm going to do more rituals. And he decided to cast a gigantic fuck off ritual because he loves his rituals. And he made this thing called the Warp Storm like he did in Cadia. Oh, God, he made a Warp Oh, that's He bad. did it again. That's, that's he can't bad. keep getting away with it. He can't keep getting away with this. Uh, so he made this giant Warp Storm called the Ruin Storm. And the Ruin Storm's entire point was to cut off Ultramar from the rest of the galaxy and stop the Ultramarine reinforcements from making their way to, to Terra. And so when the Word Bearers dipped, like leaving all of their dudes on the planet, because who cares, the Word Bearers aren't nice guys. Sure. They were able to cast this Warp Storm and be like, ah, sucks to be you. You can't make it to Terra, ha <laughs> ha. And they Put left this Cal. shit, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what they did. <laughs> I'm just imagining that that meme, but just with Lorgar's face, and he's all like, all like, ho like, uh, uh, holy, with all of his fucking scripture around him. <laughs> By the emperor, I'm out. <laughs> and then he, and then they out, and then the Ultramarines can't get in because the ruin storm. What an apropos name for a warp storm. I know. Erebus just loves his warp storms. Uh, <laughs> but after that. We then moved into something called the Shadow Crusade. And this is when oh things boy. get exciting. Because it wasn't right. exciting enough. I know, So, right? so Gilliman, being like battered as, as hell from this fight, after a bit was able to kind of start getting his group back up, right? Getting some, some uh, things up and, and getting a force. And this is actually turning into more of an underdog story. Because after the Battle of Kalth, the word bearers, of course, Lorgar, linked up with the world eaters with Angron, and they launched this giant crusade against the 500 worlds in Ultramar. Yeah, Ultramar oh. has 500 worlds. Damn. It is a that... big, there's no reason why, or it's obvious reason why he's got the biggest group, because there's a <laughs> lot of people in Ultramar. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the way he set it up, I guess it makes sense that he'd have 500 worlds since he's, you know. He's making sure every planet's self-sufficient, and yeah, that, that makes sense that he has a shitload of worlds. Typical Gilliman accounting. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so he decided, they decided to lay waste the best they could to that world, or to that uh, uh, region of space, Ultramar. So Lorgar and Angron worked together, and they were able to destroy 26 worlds uh, before Gilliman's fleet was actually finally able to arrive. And Gilliman's fleet... It, it looked like a fucking rust bucket. It looked oh. it looked so horribly destroyed. It was forty one <laughs> ships consisting of his current warship, which it's not called Ultra Ship, but it's oh. just as it's just as Boy Scouty. It's, it's called the Mars Ship. <laughs> it's called Courage Above All. Ugh, what a dick. <laughs> 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 it's very I know. It, it fits the ultramarine robo giller manner but i i boy, know what a i nerd. know he's such a boy scout it's so funny I um guess but you his... say he's got robot gilla manners huh hmm? he's, he's a boy scout. where's your drum set shy <laughs> but with the sound effect let's go put, put the sound effect shy <laughs> let's go <laughs> do it <laughs> um Anyway, the ultramarine like armada was just this cobbled together fleet of ships. Like it was a ragtag force, but it was still a force. And Gilliman was doing the damn best he could with what he had because he's a he's a smart guy. And he made it to the planet of Nuceria, which I, I uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about. Um, basically, it's the home world of the world leaders of Angron. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about it eventually, if I'm not mistaken. I think the world leaders were trying to eradicate all life from it. Either way, he arrived there and he was leading this fancy two-pronged assault. Both Lorgar's flagship, which was known as the, Fid oh boy, 
Fidelitis Lex. Okay. It was it was Lorgar's big flagship. Uh, F Fedoratus. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I'm thinking of the I'm thinking of the fucking Amokus guy. He's standing there. He's like Fedoratus. Oh no! <laughs> I was gonna say, should I should get a picture? Should I should get a picture of like the ship and put like a fedora on it? Mm, the fedora, the fedora tus, <laughs> uh, th that that thing, the Fidelitus Lex, was in the sky fighting off the Ultramarines and the Conqueror, which is the World Eaters flagship, which is much more World Eaters. So what Gillen was doing is it's like kind of fancy two pronged assault, and, and it's actually kind of a cool sight with the battle because like all these dudes are fighting the world eaters on the on the planet surface, and normally the world eaters would just carve through them because they're so goddamn angry, but the Ultramarines <laughs> are so goddamn angry that they're like meeting head to head, and, and going through all of that is just like it's just a massive battle, and then Lorgar's flagship actually like started to die so much that the escape pod started launching and the thing started drifting into the atmosphere and it landed into one of the oceans and you see this like moon sized ship just go like <laughs> slam Jeez. Like, th this is just a, a fucking bloodbath man God. Uh, but then things get really fun eventually oh. with enough time Gilliman was able to confront Lorgar himself and the two of oh. them had their duel um Ooh. it's it's cool i like when they when when the primarchs duel it's always fun right um, that's i i i love it too because they're you know they're these two big beefy like the you know let's let's go like it doesn't get much better than two primarchs fighting right it hopefully not i mean it shouldn't get any better than that yeah. But as they were fighting each other, Lorgar and Gilliman were obviously in the beginning were decently evenly evenly matched. We got a we got a they're bouncing each other in between, and then also like all their dudes are fighting around them. It's like the Bane and Batman fight at the end of uh, the Dark Knight Rises, where like everyone else is just punching each other. The two of them are just going at it themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But th at the, the time, Lorgar had this thing. It was called a Crozius. It's like this fancy um like mace mall thing he had some reach compared to Gilliman but Gilliman had his like big power fist right uh, and as the two of them were dueling they kept on smacking each other in the usual but then Gilliman got this this solid uppercut right into uh, into Lorgar's sternum oof. and cracked his like ribs and his, his sternum and just like hemorrhaged his chest but at the same time Lorgar took that maul and just bashed Gilliman's head hit him oof dead in the side of the head and uh, bleeding, like, Lorgar's now bleeding heavily internally with now Gilliman's, like, half of his face is, like, fractured and, like, blood oh. is just, his skull got cracked. I was gonna say that didn't kill him? Cause, I mean, like... Oh, well, he had a helmet on. Oh, okay. I, I thought you meant he didn't have, like, I thought he was going in without a helmet and, like, he got hit upside the head from Lorgar with that big old maul. I was like, this fucker's god we dead. Like, no, oh, no, they, no. I was thinking, like, it was going to be one of those, like, really epic, like, uh, Gilliman hits him in the chest with the power fist, and then Lorgar dies, but then, like, blap, baps him in the head, and they kind of both die from, like, simultaneous, you know? Like, one of those little epic, like, I kill you, you kill me things. Uh, yeah, I mean, they both they both definitely traded their blows, but, no, they're both in a lot of pain, but not quite dead. Gotcha. But then things got a little worse when Kool-Aid Man style blows through the fucking wall comes Angron with <laughs> dual wielding chain swords and he's oh. like and he's just like just there being Angron being just like fucking furious and okay. it's like it look, looks like Gilliman is like let's go <laughs> even even after everything that he went through with uh with Lorgar he's still just like oh yeah sure I'll fucking 1v1 you and he's still able to Oh no, he doesn't want a one v one Lorgar oh, okay. or, uh, or um uh wait not Lorgar fuck uh, Angron but Angron he doesn't give a shit he's like let's okay. go oh okay I thought you were saying Gilliman was like let's go let's I'll fuck you too okay no I was I was confused I was like whoa Gilliman okay who fuck is a badass well he he did fight Angron don't get me wrong yeah oh yeah 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 yeah. 
but it was less of a fight, more of a retreat. Like, Angron was doing that thing where he just has, like, a flurry of attacks. He's, like, just beating on him over and over again. And Gilliman's just, like, blocking and blocking, but he keeps on backing up as he blocks. Like, he can't get a hit in because yeah. Angron is, like, just a, a whirlwind of attack. Yeah. Like, he's ridiculous. Uh, but during this time, the currently bleeding and, and pained Lorgar was, like, there's this thing called the Butcher's Nails. Which is the shit that you stick in your in your fucking brain, that it's like some kind of implant that makes them really really angry. Oh right, um, and, and and Angron has a shitload of those in his head, right? Yeah, you can see them in his brain. I think I think that's what like his dreads look like. They're not actually like dreads. They're they're like fucking yeah. They're the cords, nails, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. It was killing Angron. That's right. It, it eats at your brain uh, a bit if it go if it goes too much. Um. So. He was seeing Angron go fucking mad, and, and he's like, "Oh my God, Angron's gonna kill himself through all this like, f uh, like fury." And so what Lorgar started doing was he was like, <gasps> and then after he actually summoned like a giant pepperoni pizza from the fucking sky, it started raining blood. You mean marinara? It started raining marinara. <laughs> You're right. It started raining <laughs> cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Hey. 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 <laughs> started oh, raining man. marinara sauce, and and then and then when it started raining, it started raining blood, <laughs> and then <laughs> as it started raining, uh, raining blood, and, and going crazy, Gilliman's like, "What in the goddamn hell is going on with you, Lorgar?" He's like speaking a fucking foreign language. He's doing all these mm -hmm. incantations. And during this fight, Angron started going crazy. And this is actually when Angron himself turned into a demon Primarch. Uh, through, oh. this, this, through this ritual itself is when he eventually started going fucking crazy and, and the demon form of him started breaking form and, and breaking through his armor because if he didn't, Angron would have died. Oh. So in a sense, Lorgar turned him into a demon Primarch or a demon prince in order to stop Angron's death. Oh, to the save hand, uh, his life. Oh, to okay. save his life, quote unquote. Um, quote unquote, yeah. In a sense, there's a, I think there's a good chance that Angron would have killed Gilliman because he got a good chainsword, like, shank in his stomach and, like, revved it up a little bit into his organs. Ooh. Um, <laughs> which, which isn't great. No, uh, not not wonderful. <laughs> but Gilliman, um, but at this point, it's when he started transforming, and I think because of that, he was able to he was able to get away. So Lorgar oh. hemorrhaging blood, Gilliman just battered, and Angron breaking into his new form. Gilliman was like, "Yo, fuck this shit, I'm out," and he left. <laughs> that is a great time to fuck this shit. I'm out. Um, wow, because, uh, Shai was posting a couple pictures of, uh, Demon Prince Angron, and boy, that's... Oh, he's a, nutty. That's a motherfucker. <laughs> also, I love GW's naming processes. You know, the defining trait about this guy is he's very angry. What should we call him? Angron. Angron. <laughs> Angron. Angrion. Yeah, mm-hmm. Erebus, Giant Warp Storm, Ruin Storm, can't go back to Terra. They're stuck in this, in this section. They're all trapped. Okay, uh, without the help of the Emperor, we now need to create, like, a second form of government in order to survive in this period of time. We're gonna call it the Imperium Secundus. There's a couple people here. There's Gilliman, uh, Lionel Johnson, Sanguinius, and they're all there, and they're like, okay, shit, we need to create, like, a second form of government. Uh, Gilliman was like, I don't really want to declare myself the Emperor of this Secundus because, uh, how, how our hungry Horus was. I'm gonna give it to Primarch Lionel Johnson. Okay. And uh, w w who arrived here with his Dark Angels, even though he didn't really trust uh, Lionel Johnson. Um, mm -hmm. he, he was like, I don't really like you a whole lot. Uh, though, with some time organizing this new second Imperium Secundus thing, Gilliman survived an assassination attempt by the Alpha Legion. <laughs> Alpha hey, Legion. who um, are they? Who, uh, no one knows. <laughs> exactly. And, who was it? And eventually, my boy arrived. And you might think my boy is Vulcan. It's not. Yeah, I, oh, who's your uh, boy? I, I have a new favorite Primark now. Conrad um, Kurz. Conrad Kurz. I, Let's go. I, I've been reading those Night Lord novels. I fucking love the Night Lords now. They're, they're <laughs> like, they, pro they might be my favorite Space Marine Legion. I Night really Lord like Army them. When? when are you making the Night Lord Army, Bricky? Uh, I already have a Lord Discordant. Let's go! Am I happy? All right.
It might happen. It might happen. I'll, we'll see. It's, shh, shh, shh. Anyway, uh, point being, the uh, eventually Night Lord's Conrad curse actually was hidden in the Dark Angel's flagship, and he was let loose on to in Macrog itself, causing all sorts of problems. And Gilliman and the Lion fought Conrad Kurz together, and he was able to hold them off because Conrad Kurz is like a savage. He's insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and instead of being cornered like they thought he was, he actually led them into a trap where he had a whole bunch of bombs detonated under the structure they were currently at, huh. and he blew it up to have the structure fall on them, and the only way they escaped is because an old loyalist Iron Warrior guy used, like, an alien tech to teleport them away. It's how they got to Ultramar, or to Macrog to begin with. Mm -hmm. Crazy, probably Eldar tech, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, cheaters. Bunch of cheaters. Fucking Conrad Kurz, like, attacked both of them at the same time, led them into a trap, dropped, a, like, a cathedral on them, and, and only got away because they cheated. Bunch of bitches. Yep. Conrad um, Kurz anyway. is better than both of them. You heard it here yep. first. Conrad Kurz is the coolest Primarch. Yep, all those Agreed. all those seven seven Night Lords fans are like my boy. Let's go. Um, so anyway, Gilliman decided to give the title to Sanguinius uh, instead as the Regent of the Imperium Secundus, because Sanguinius is he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's awesome. We, we like we like him. Yeah, I've never actually seen that picture before, Shy. That is the most Conrad Kurz thing I've seen in forever. Oh, As man. the Ultramarines McCrag, and he's just there with like his his hanging Ultramarine <laughs> bodies. I love that picture. <laughs> I, oh, I love Curse so much. Um, that should be his mini. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, so, with the new Imperial Secundus uh, created, the biggest issue they had was Gilliman and, and Lionel Johnson constantly fighting over policy. Now, we haven't done the Dark Angels yet either, but. For a, I know a lot of people really like Lionel Johnson. I thought he was cool. I must say, reading this, it makes it seem like Lion's kind of a dick. I mean, Gilliman's a Boy Scout, but the Lion seems really uncaring of, like, civilian casualties. Um, uh. Though, basically, he's really pissed at Conrad. Because we meme a lot that the Dark Angels are a Chaos Legion, because a lot of their group went to the Fallen which is like right. a turn chaos. A large amount of the distrust in the Dark Angels was fostered because Conrad Kurz is a troll. <laughs> Kurz, with his actions, is one of the main reasons why the Dark Angels hate, uh, um, uh, Dark. some of the Dark Angels went to chaos. Or right, it's assumed right. that way, and a lot of people are distrusting of them. Um, so the line was like hell-bent on dealing with Kurz. Like right. on hunt on hunting for him, and he was like, "Yo, Gilliman, he's on your planet. Declare martial law across the entire planet." And Gilliman was Ooh. like, "No, <laughs> excuse me, excuse no, I'm not doing that. You fucking psycho." <laughs> and, and he assumed that there's like a lot of rebellions started breaking out on the home world of the Ultramarines, and he was damn positive that Conrad Kurz is the reason. He, so he thought that these rebellions were a fault of the Night Lords, which was in Kurs, which it probably was. And in that area of, of the rebellions, uh, Lion was like, you know, there's a lot of problems there. Let's nuke them. And Gilliman was like, no. <laughs> no. Stop it. You're a psycho and I don't like it. Like, <laughs> You're not doing that. these things, man. <laughs> Cut it out. Like, Please stop that. And like, like I think, I think the lion is like, is like becoming a paranoid mess because the curse is like, he's like this, this bee that keeps flying by his ear, yeah. and he can't, he can't deal with him. Um, and in fact, like, so, so much of that kept going on, uh, that eventually they were able to finally capture him with a more conventional space marine assault, and they were able to capture Kurz. And right. they held him to account on a public trial for uh, for his treason, which I love because Kurz had one of my favorite dialogues in all of it. Dur I, I think it was during this trial. Maybe it's during something else. But he called Gilliman, quote, unquote, an avenging bean counter. 
<laughs> that is pretty great. I just, I, I just really great. like that one. He's an that's avenging bean counter. It's <laughs> like, it's like, what a great fucking name for Gilliman. Oh yeah, just a really angry accountant. Robo bean uh, counter. I like it. Robo bean counter. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but during this trial, uh, Kurz was like. Yo, he actually revealed something. He was like, Lionel Johnson actually did order orbital strikes against the rebellion, against Gilliman's wishes. Oh, did he? And, and this revelation made the lion so angry, he nearly went to kill Kurz in the middle of the trial. Oh, shit. And, and, inst and instead, because of like all of this, and Gilliman and Sanguinius was like, okay, all right, lion, you're out of the group. You're out, you're out of the group. You're out, you've been banned from my server. Get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm surprised it took that long uh, with, uh, with all of their little spats. Because uh, although it's weird, like to me, Lionel Johnson is doing like the typical Imperium thing. It's like, oh, there's someone I don't like. Just fucking nuke them. Uh, there's someone I don't like. Ah, Marshall, let's go fucking get him. It's like, that's so Imperium. And for Gilliman, it's like, no, no, I care about, you know, you can't do that to my place. Fuck you, man. It's a very Ironic. almost yeah. He's a caring guy. He's, you know. After the trial, they said, "Hey, we're gonna try and breach the ruin storm to get to Terra, who they just found out still lived." Uh, and of course, you know, they were like, "Hey, the Emperor's still alive. We gotta make sure he's got defense from Horus." And as they attempt to navigate said ruin storm, the fleet of the Ultramarines, Dark Angels, Blood Angels, came across like, you know, God knows how many fucking horrors during the ruin storm. Yeah. Uh, where oh. Gilliman again survived an assassination attempt by word bearers. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, of course. Of course, yep, yep. Finally, left behind in the space where Davin uh, was had been a breach in the Ruin Storm, which was visible to their fleet, and the path would eventually lead to Terra, of course. Okay. Um, however, it was apparent that Horus had foreseen that this route to the throne world would open up, and so he oh. left behind a giant fleet of traitor warships to bar that route. Oh, because, no. of course. Of course, sure, why not? So lots of the Iron Warriors were basically there to uh, to stop yeah. them for a time being. Uh, long story short, after this major battle, uh, Conrad Kurz dipped mm -hmm. because, of course, he dipped. Sure, he was like, because he's the sneakiest, sneaky man, nine foot tall man. <laughs> you never because seen he's him. no, he's always gone. He's he's, he's out. Marker. He's fucking Kurz. Um, the Siege of Terra, of course, happened. The giant important siege. Uh, obviously, our good friend Sanguinius and the boys were able to make it to an extent. Yeah, oh, um, Sanguinius. Oh, you know, Sanguinius. Oh, Sanguinius. He's all fighting demons. Oh, Sanguinius. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, of course, as we all know, a large amount of other guys, particularly Gilliman and stuff, were not quite able to reach the actual major battle of terror itself. Um, they were they were held back too hard. So the lion, dark angels, space wolves, these guys were like hours away from the major final battle between the emperor and Horus, and you know they're like four or five hours too late. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm skipping a lot here, but you get the gist of it. We talked about this many times. Oh yeah, we 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 have the we have a Horus Heresy trilogy that you can yes. go watch for a more in depth thing. Just imagine if they had made it though, that would have that would have completely turned the heresy on its head. But they did. It would have. Uh, so after this, after the heresy, after the emperor died and everything, Gilliman took command of the reform of... This is the thing we never talked about after the heresy. He took command of the reform of the of the Imperium. He was like, okay, all, a lot of us went under threat of chaos. All these problems happened. We need to fix what had occurred. So... Yeah. After tons of infighting, tons of problems about who should be the Lord Commander of the Imperium, Gilliman eventually took this, uh, took this entire like uh, throne for himself. Mm -hmm. He led through the Great Scouring to get rid of more of the traitor legions, and he, through large amounts of time, would say that never again would one person, no matter how noble their motives, wield the power of an entire Space Marine Legion anymore. It would now be split among chapter masters and no single person would hold the entire power of a Marine Legion, so this would never happen again. Right. In fact, with smart. enough time, well, it makes sense. And he was like, yeah. okay, we need to diversify power, diversify structure, make it so that we can't wield all this strength at once. 
and he creates something that you might have heard of called the Codex Astartes. Um, oh, okay. Kind of a meme. It's basically a book <laughs> on how to do things. It's like, follow the book. Now, <laughs> this one of the reasons why the Ultramarines are so anal is because they follow that book to the letter. Like, ah. if they do something and they're like, the Codex Astartes does not support this action. It's like, shut the fuck up, Blueberry. <laughs> like... It's, it's space book says this is bad like like it's uh they're so they're so annoying with their codex of starties they're it, it's it's a smart book it makes sense and but a lot of the other primarchs were like i don't believe in this i'm not down oh, for this okay like i don't i don't agree with your codex of starties i don't i don't like i don't like this this very binding book this very binding set of regulations Right. Um, some it's, it's people. It's not fluid. It's too strict. It's too yeah. It does. It doesn't you work go for them. The, yeah, yeah. You gotta go outside the box. Yeah, you gotta go outside um, the book. Some people like Rogel Dorn really didn't like it, but eventually accepted it. Um, ironic that Rogel Dorn didn't like regulations. I, I, um, I thought you were gonna say Rogel Dorn didn't like it because he couldn't read, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, what I, that's what I thought. We were <laughs> where, where the fuck did you hear that from? I don't know. Like the 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 meme I keep hearing about him from you is like, oh yeah, he's like the personification of like a uh, uh, triangle thing and square hole, and you just keep mashing it. So I was oh, kind of thought of it as he... kind of a Neanderthal. <laughs> that, like, no, it's not because he, he just... can't read. <laughs> It's not because he can't reach it's because he doesn't have any social cues. He's oh, just I like thought, I thought he was just stupid. <laughs> no, he's right. incre- no, he's incredibly smart, but he's oh, okay. <laughs> he's incredibly smart. He's just he's just like he's got a stick up his ass. He's got a oh, massive okay. stick up his ass. <laughs> I didn't know anything else about him. So when you when you described him like that, I was like, oh yeah, he's like really strong, but he's kind of a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's why I thought that's where we were going. No, that's Lehman Russ. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Fuck Lehman Russ. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, because you like <laughs> Thousand Sons. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can, you can fuck right off. That's so funny. Okay. Point <laughs> being, after that, there's a lot of uh, second founding of the Space Marines, which created this thing called the, the Successor Chapters to divide Space Marine Legion so they could never be too large. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the Ultramarines were still always the biggest, but it allowed, that's why there's a shitload of Ultramarine successor chapters. They have the most successors. Um, example, the Imperial Fists of Rogel Dorn ha- were split into the Crimson Fists and like the Black Templars, for instance. Like there's oh, lots okay. of, I think there's a thing called the Flesh Terrors, uh, which were a Blood Angels variant. Um, they kept on splitting up into, I think uh, the Lamenters were a successor chapter of the Blood Angels as well. Poor Lamenters. Uh, poor Lamenters. <laughs> poor Lamenters. Uh, <laughs> but Gilliman basically was like, okay, with an uh, iron fist, I'm going to split it among, among different avenues of power, make this thing work out properly. He talked with this guy. His name was Call. Pretty cool guy. And he was like, hey, Call, I need you to do two things for me. Number one. If I, I want you to create this thing called the Primaris Space Marines, a completely new generation of warriors to improve upon the original design. Because this is oh. kind of back before, like, uh, before technology was, I mean, it was, it was kind of heresy, but it wasn't like as bad as we're now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like, hey, make this new thing. And secondly, if I were to ever die, I need you to make me something to make sure I don't die. I need something <laughs> to help me because Like, at this point, if I ever saw like the Emperor's death occurred, I need something that would keep me alive. Uh, Because I'm the new leader of the Imperium. Right. So then, this is beautiful man, pretty sexy. His name's Fulgrim. And Fulgrim... Oh, uh -oh. (laughs) uh-oh. And Fulgrim was like, Hey, Gilliman, I'm a snake now. Here's this... Here's this fancy sword with poison on it. Slice... I'm, oh no! I'm like I'm abridging a lot here, but long story short, he fought Fulgrim, and Fulgrim slit his throat with a poison blade, uh, oh. Gilliman's throat. <laughs> I thought you were just and gonna so, say he stabbed him, but like he slit his throat. Jesus. He slit his throat with a poison blade, and mm. Gilliman, very similarly to the blade that stabbed Horus, very similarly. Oh, and so okay. Gilliman was like, 
I'm dying. And they stuck him <laughs> into a stasis chamber, like a stasis field. And okay. for 10,000 years, he was stuck there, frozen Ten in time, physically impossible to heal, while simultaneously not able to do anything. And for the longest time, there's that thing that GW does, where like all the Primarchs kind of went and did their own thing. Like, mm -hmm. we think Rogel Dorn is dead, but not sure. Lehman Russ and, and Corvus Korax ran into the warp. Jagatai Khan was like, I'm coming for Dark Eldar Booty, and he's in the he's in the webway. Um, they're all like gone, right? And this is where this is where Gilliman went. He got shanked, and now he was stuck in stasis for 10,000 years. Yikes. Was and he... with that. Oh, oh go ahead. I, I thought you were I, I was gonna say, like, is this one of those things where like he's essentially asleep, or is he like perpetually like awake and aware and constantly feeling the pain of a slit neck? Um, it would be more grim dark if I said the second, but I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. sure he, he was just frozen in time. We're like, he probably does. He probably just wakes up again 10,000 years later. I was going to say, if he wakes up from that, he's going to be fucking insane. <laughs> like, oh yeah, no, 10, probably not the Necron variant. Constant. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, that being, that being said, obviously there's a lot of a bridge stuff near the end in order to get this done because Gilliman is everywhere. He's mm -hmm. like the guy. You know, gotcha. like he, if you had to think of the most iconic character besides the Emperor in terms of Primarchs, he's probably the one. Um, mm -hmm. Though, obviously being in states for 10,000 years, it's soon time to wake him up. That'll be our next episode. Ooh. Oh my god, the Ultramarines had so much. Though, I want to leave you with a quick quote from Rabute Gilliman. When, hey. he di when he did wake up to kind of get, get you an idea of what he thinks. Okay. So he wakes up, and his first quote is, Why do I still live? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Just to suffer. That's great. <laughs> um, it's like, what more do you want from me? I gave everything I had to you, to them. Look what they've made of our dream. This bloated, rotting carcass of an empire is driven not by reason and hope, but by fear, hate, and ignorance. Better that we had all burned in the fires of Horus's ambition than oh. live to see this. Oh. So, so he's got ultra <laughs> depression. He woke. Oh, he's woken man. up in this modern day, and he's like, "What have we? Nightmare. What have you done?" This is like, everything I didn't want. What the fuck the, don't is forget, wrong with you? Don't forget, this is Lorgar's dream, too. Like, the arch enemy of the Ultramarines is a zealotous religious cult. Oh. And he, he wakes up and he's like, God save the Emperor of Mankind, holy be thy name. Hamina Hamina. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. The irony. The, the irony, pain, the pain, the, sadness. the suffering. Oh, I mean, I, 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 I think this episode successfully made me like Robo Gilliman. Like he seems like a pretty reasonable, cool dude. Um, I still think the Ultramarines are trash, though. I still mm, not a big fan of the Ultramarines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotta be honest, when you were like, "Oh yeah, they got ambushed and 120 of them died," I was like, "Oh man, Word Bear's sick, bro. Let's go." Let's get it. Let's get oh, it, dude. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> At least but Gilliman's cool. Gilliman's cool. I like him. He's a reasonable, well thought out, strong, just dude. He's cool. I like him. So you successfully uh, turned me into the meme of liking Robot Gilliman, but still, fuck the Ultramarines. <laughs> so, good job. I, good all job right. All right. All right. Fine. <laughs> At least you understand why they're everywhere, because they're the tactical. Yeah. And also, they have the um, the Ultra most people. bar, right? They they. they <laughs> well, it makes sense they have the most people too, because like uh -huh. they have they have the largest contingents of marines. Well, they always get the releases. That's why everything is always ultra marines with GW because yeah, they sure. tend to be the largest legion. Mm -hmm. It makes it makes sense. I I think they're interesting. I think you definitely like Gilliman a lot more if you're the person who enjoys the logistical side. Oh, for of sure. Of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, if you like reason, you like Gilliman. <laughs> yeah, he's seems a like pretty, a reasonable, like, good leader. I care about my people. I care about what happens. And, you know, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he's, he's swell. He's swell. He is, he is swell. 
Ultramarines fans out there, I know I had to abridge a lot because I'm sorry that's kind of your fucking fault for having <laughs> 9 million goddamn books on your 9 million goddamn battles. But you know, if I can convince DK to be like, he seems cool, I did my job. Yes, you did. Still fuck the Ultramarines, but I like you, Gilliman. You're all right. God, God damn it. <laughs> all right, fine. No, you know what? It's it's a little there's a little more character added to him when he has ultra depression later on. Oh god, I bet. I I think he'd be hilarious after waking up. Like I can't wait until we get into a little bit more about how he was when he woke up and he saw just this <laughs> That quote at the end was fucking amazing. <laughs> it's Where's the Shy? Do you have the the picture of him uh sitting at the throne with Celestine and all the people around him? I, I believe oh, that's like the I, main the, the main I, image with him. I think I've seen that one, and it is he he does not look like a happy camper. No, he's <laughs> sitting on his throne. He's just like really sad. <laughs> it, it, I always think it's interesting because like Celestine in that photo is putting on his iron halo, which is like a like a field or whatever horse field. Yeah. And I just imagining him looking at Celestine, being like, "My father would be disgusted by you." Like you are, you are a zealotous, insane demon. Basically, it's like, like when you really think about it, he's, he he probably looks he's at Celestine right. like, "What the fuck?" Oh man, I I'm just so curious to see how he handles like the the sort of present time that he's in, because like everything around him must seem so nigh heretical that like. He's he's got to lose his fucking mind. <laughs> like he's got to go absolutely stir crazy. Um but yeah, I I am I am so so curious to see how this goes now. Why is Okay, I guess that is the photo, but why does she have flex tape? <laughs> why does she Maybe cuz she's trying to flex tape the wound on his neck, you know? It's just, you know, you got to But he's already alive. Ah. Never mind. Fuck it. All right. Anyway, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna head us out. I'm taking <laughs> yeah, us home. Take us home. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching the Ultramarines episode. Next week we'll talk about uh, the resurgence and the Indominus Crusade and, and revival of uh, Robooty Gorilla Man. Uh, my name's the Brick. You can find me at Bricky everywhere. DK, where can they find you? DK Diamantes everywhere for all intents and purposes. We're just not gonna talk about Instagram. Yeah, uh, you can find Shy at Quite Shallow, Quite Shy, all those places. Uh, Shy, we'll have a shorter episode next week, I promise. Maybe. I'll see you all later. Blueberries for life. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs>